Okay, let's go on. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit now about the um, different visions. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk particularly about Jefferson's vision of the country, all right? And, and Jefferson's vision is that um, the, the model citizen in the United States should be a single family farmer. A kind of, the idea was to create an agrarian middle class, a, a, a middle class of, of farmers who, uh, who would raise enough on their farm uh, to support themselves and their families and have a little bit left over to, to sell so they could buy luxuries. And, and so the idea here isn't that somebody is going to be incredibly prosperous, or I should say they're not going to be rich, but they will be prosperous and they'll be comfortable. And the idea then is that it, they can live out on their farms uh, and they can, they can live their kind of um, middle-class lives and, and they, they would not have to worry about politics and they wouldn't have to worry about world affairs and they could just enjoy their liberty. You guys follow me here? That's the idea, okay? The idea is that, uh, is that the, um, the, uh, the country, the ideal citizen would be a landowner. Jefferson called it a yeoman farmer. That's Y-E-O-M-A-N. But what he really means is a, as a land, uh, a single family farmer who owns the land. Well, why is it so important for them to own the land? The answer to that is because if you own the land, then you're more likely to care for it. Okay, so the idea it really comes from the Greek uh, city-states, going all the way back to, you know, uh, BC, right? Where, uh, where, for example, in in Athens or in Sparta, you could you could vote. There was a there was a democracy there, but you could only vote if you owned land. And the reason why was because if you owned land, that meant that your the the welfare of the city-state was the same as your own welfare. So, so the idea here is that if you own part of the country, then the country's welfare is, is the same as your welfare. It, it, it's kind of like um, if, you, if you go out, if you have a car, if, if you own a car, um, you don't want somebody to puke in it. Right? Uh, but if you rent a car, you don't care if somebody pukes in it because you don't have it. You don't care about it, right? And, and it's the same thing here with tea. So, so uh, when when Hamilton thought that people should be um, uh, people should be um, you know working in industry. Well, those industry, the, the industry is going to be in the cities, right? And in the cities, they're not going to own the land. They're going to rent their tenements, whatever they, they live in, apartments or whatever, right? And, and uh, because they rent, they don't care. They don't care about the, 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 the uh, all they care about is their own interests. You, you're following me here, right? So, so, so Jefferson thought that if we had a, a country that was made up of landowners, that um, they would, they would, act in favor of the country and that would create a republic of virtue we call it a republic of virtue and the virtue is built in because of your own self-interest your self-interest is the same as the state's self-interest you guys get what i'm saying all right so that's going to be jefferson's idea and that means then that well we have to have a lot of land okay uh, because if everybody's going to be a farmer, there's got to be land. Okay, you guys are with me? Questions, comments? All right, so let's talk then about uh, the Louisiana Purchase. Okay, now let's think about America in 1800. That's when Jefferson was elected president, actually 1801, right? Um, and, and most of the people in the country lived here along the eastern seaboard. Right, but a number of people were moving into the Ohio River Valley. Okay, uh, we have talked about the Ohio River Valley before because that's where uh, the war, the, seven, the uh, French and Indian War, was really begun by by George Washington. But the people in the Ohio River Valley made a living from farming. They grew corn, and they would sell their product in the East 
But what was the product? Did they actually sell corn? Were they selling popcorn or what was it? What did they do to the corn before they sold it? They would turn it into something. Remember I told you just a minute ago about the rebellion in Western Pennsylvania? What was that Whis rebellion about? Whiskey. Whiskey, exactly. So they, they would turn the corn into whiskey and then they would sell it in the East. But unlike today, it was very difficult to get from the Ohio River Valley to the east because of the mountains. And so it was much easier for the farmers in, uh, in this area to load their whiskey on barges that would go down the Ohio River and then down the Mississippi River. And then they would put their, their um, goods on the docks in New Orleans. So they had what was called right of deposit, meaning they could deposit their goods on the docks in New Orleans. And then in New Orleans, American trading vessels could pick up the cargo and bring it to the east. And it was much easier to do that than it was to try to drag all that stuff over the mountains because there weren't any roads. OK, it was basically you had to drag everything. OK, you guys get what I'm saying? All right. So so the problem is going to be this in 18. One, France. Uh, see this this area. Let me just go back further. In in the, in the Seven Years' War, uh, remember that France had previously owned this land, actually all of this land, but they lost it in the French and Indian War, the Seven Years' War. And this remember this part was under the rule of the British, and, and this part was under the rule of the Spanish. But in 1803, France invaded Spain. And uh, as a result of that, they acquired Louisiana. Okay. The reason why they acquired Louisiana was because there was this, uh, they were trying to reestablish a slave trade in a, in a little island called uh, San Domingue, which is where Haiti is today. And when you have uh, plantation agriculture like they had in in Haiti or in San Domingue, you don't actually grow food there. And so what happened was that uh, France under Napoleon had acquired Louisiana so that he could grow food to, uh, to feed the slaves in San Domingue, okay? And that was in 1801, okay? Here's the problem that the, the French well, first off, let me just go here, right? When the French took over this territory, they closed the Mississippi to uh, American uh, tra uh, <coughs> American com commerce, and they revoked Americans' right of deposit, which meant that the farmers then in Western Pennsylvania had nowhere to sell their products. A and that meant that this was a, a real economic crisis for them. OK, <clears throat> in the meantime, the the attempt by the French to reestablish uh, slave slavery in San Domingue is going to fail. And so it will happen then that after acquiring Louisiana, Napoleon will realize he has no need for it. Um, and, and so what happens then is that um, uh, that. Jefferson sends an emissary, a representative, to negotiate with France for the sale of New Orleans. The idea being if the, if the United States buys New Orleans and has rights of passage on the Mississippi, then they'll be able to resume their whiskey trade. Okay, you guys are with me? But once this guy gets there, his name is Livingston. Once Livingston gets there, Napoleon has already realized he doesn't need Louisiana. For anything so he agrees to sell Louisiana to the United States for 15 million dollars now this is this is uh, incredibly important because this is an empire I mean look at the size of this territory it's bigger than any of the European countries right and and uh, and the United States now has an opportunity to buy an empire okay 
So, so now this is an opportunity that people can't, nobody can turn this down, right? $50 million is almost nothing. I mean, even in those days, it was almost nothing, right? In terms of the amount of territory that you would acquire. And, and no country in the world had ever been able to buy an empire, right? But here, the United States has this opportunity. But Jefferson has an ideological problem. Does anybody want to tell me what this problem is? And think about the, um, the, the difference between the... Um, the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans in terms of their uh, interpretation of the Constitution. Because Jefferson is what? What is he, Democratic, Republican, or Federalist? Democratic, Republican. Right, he's a Democratic, Republican. And what do the Democratic, Republicans say about the Constitution? How should it be interpreted? Strictly or loosely? Strictly. Okay, so now, now having said that, do you see the problem that that uh, Jefferson has with buying Louisiana, with the federal government buying Louisiana? He would have to assign more power to the federal government in order to gain this purchase. Right, because what does the Constitution say about the president's ability to buy territory? It doesn't. It doesn't say anything. You guys have read it. Did you see anywhere in there where it said, that, oh, yeah, the president can buy a territory? <laughs> it doesn't say that, right? And so if, we, if Jefferson is a strict constructionist, which he is, then that would mean he really doesn't have the authority to buy this territory. But how can you turn this territory down? And so even though there was there, he had some you know, ideological problems with it, he went ahead with it anyway. The United States buys the Louisiana Territory. And then, and then after that, you guys have probably all heard of Lewis and Clark. There was an expedition that actually started here in Pennsylvania, went down the Ohio, up the Mississippi and the Missouri, and then they walked across the mountains and they went to the West Coast and spent the winter on the West Coast in what's today Washington. Okay, now, now, Keep in mind here that when the United States bought Louisiana, nobody really knew where the limit was, okay? It was just out there somewhere. And so there was no reason why uh, Americans couldn't um, explore this territory. As it happens, this territory was actually claimed by Britain, okay? Um, and when, but because, I should say this way, but because uh, Americans spent the, the winter on the coast in Washington, that establishes a claim by the United States. The United States will say, well, we've been there, so it's ours. <laughs> and this will almost lead to, I'm sorry, this will almost lead to a war um, 30 or 40 years from now. We'll see how that, that turns out later, right? But at any rate, um, the, this is going to be the uh, purchase of uh, Louisiana. The reason why Jefferson wanted to buy Louisiana was he felt that this would be a, a, a perfect landscape for his agrarian, um, his agrarian vision, I guess, the, the agrarian republic, where, where there's been a lot of land here that people can take advantage of to become... Um, uh, yeoman farmers. Okay, you guys are with me? Questions, comments? <clears throat> One last thing I want to mention about that uh, is that um, the, uh, the Federalists, now this is, this is kind of ironic, the Federalists were against the purchase of Louisiana. Okay, A and you would think, well, maybe it has something to do with the Constitution. But remember, the Federalists were uh, the loose constructionists. So it would have seemed like something they, they would go along with. The problem was that if Jefferson gets away with buying Louisiana and making all that territory available to people, who are the people going to think? Which political party? The Democratic think? Republicans. Exactly. So if the Democratic Republicans 
gain a bunch of support from giving away land or selling it very cheaply, then that will take that will take support away from the Federalists, right? You guys get what I'm saying? And, and so in order to try to maintain their power, they try to stop the sale, but they aren't able to do it, okay? And then as part of this argument between or over Louisiana, there's going to be an incident where, uh, where Hamilton, uh, I'm not sure exactly, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but there's, there's a, 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 an incident of honor between Alexander Hamilton, who is now uh, Vice uh, Alexander Hamilton, and Aaron Burr, who is now Vice President, and they will decide to have a duel. And the duel uh, ends with Hamilton being killed, and then Burr um, escapes into the West and tries to start an empire in Kansas. Eventually, he's captured and put on trial, but he's um, he is um, acquitted. All right. Questions, comments about any of this?